Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Portugal have just advanced to the quarterfinals of Euro 2024 after knocking out Slovenia 3-0 on penalties. In a game that for 90 minutes, it was a snooze fest, but in extra time and in penalties, it really picked up, man. And these Euros, bro, I'm not trying to be a hater here, but for the most part, they have kind of been underwhelming. I mean, these games, when you're seeing like these favorites, these big boys playing, you're expecting to see like a goal fest, and it's just like, they always play down to their competition. France plays down to their competition. England, we know, plays down to their competition. Portugal plays down to their competition. Germany over the past few games has not, has not been as, have not been as sharp as they were in the beginning of this tournament. It has just not been, like I was not expecting to see this at this Euro. It's one of the most open, wide open Euros I've ever seen in my life because none of the big boys are really stepping up and taking like taking a hold of this competition, except like I said, Spain will have been really, really good in every game they've played. But yeah, man, today we saw two of the big boys play. I'm not gonna bother talking about the Belgium-France game because that game was so boring and happened so long ago. I just wanna talk about this game. Very briefly, I'll give you guys my thoughts in case you're really curious about it. Uh, France, don't look good. Yet the yet, yet the score goal from open play in this tournament. That goal, obviously, that Colin Marie scored, scored, was given as an own goal, so they were yet to do that. And Tedesco, bro, the Belgian manager, you're a fucking idiot. Who plays KDB as a CDM? He was lining up between the center backs, bro. He was playing behind Onana. He's one of the best final third players this game has ever seen. And you play him as a CDM? You're stupid, bro. You are stupid. And again, Belgium were never going to win that game anyway. But still, give yourself a chance to at least play KDB further up the pitch. But anyway, man, that's my thoughts on, the, on that game. But if France keep playing like that, I mean, that, that game on, 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 on Friday, Portugal-France... If you would have told me before before the tournament we're going to get that game, I would have been like, oh my God, it's going to be the game of the tournament. Now I'm kind of dreading it because both of these teams are so bad, bro. What the fuck am I watching with Portugal? What am I watching with this Portuguese side? The first half was decent. The second half, they looked so bad. The second Roberto Martinez took Vitinha off that game, Portugal going forward were a non-factor. A non-factor. Despite that one, like, the only chance that they had was that one Raul chance, which he missed, obviously, in the second half, right before extra, uh, full time. But other than that, bro, I mean, this game was so, so bad because Roberto Martinez doesn't know how to set up a team and he ruins every single generation of good players that he gets his hands on. That's just the fact of the matter, bro. And he's going to do it again with this team. This team is so fucking talented, man. They, they, they're so good on paper, but they don't know how to fucking play. And it's so frustrating to watch. It's always these crosses, man. It's the same thing we saw with Southgate yesterday. Crosses into the box. Against Slovenia, dude. Against Slovenia, you're, you're hoofing crosses into the box, hoping for a goal. I mean, I don't get it. And I think the thing with Portugal is that their best players have yet to show up at this tournament. Cristiano Ronaldo was awful today, man. I gave him his credit against Czech Republic. And like, because obviously you guys know, if you know me from TikTok, I'm not the biggest Ronaldo fan. Okay. Obviously you guys know that. If you, like I said, if you know me from TikTok. Against Czech Republic, he didn't score, but I thought he played well because he was getting himself into position to score. I thought he was doing more, like, I think he was being active on the pitch. Today, he just wasn't good. First of all, his attitude on the pitch was fucking abysmal. His set pieces weren't great. Even though, like, the first two free kicks he took were decent, but the other, the, the third one he took was terrible. And the penalty he missed, I mean, you gotta bring that up. Everybody talks about how Messi's not clutching him and he misses all these penalties. Ronald today, I'm, suppo I'm supposed to believe, and people tell me he's the most clutch player of all time. He never misses a clutch penalty. And today, he misses that penalty. Again, it wasn't a bad pen. Granted, it wasn't a bad pen. Oblak just makes a great save. But again, Cristiano Ronaldo, Mr. Clutch, you expect him, you expect him to score that. And he didn't score it. I didn't think he was getting himself, like, he was getting himself into good position, but still, I mean, that finish, bro, that was a lot like the Morocco one, the one that I brought up earlier, where he, like, that, that, that one chance that Portugal had in the second half, where he's, like, threw on goal, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, basically, you gotta finish that, and again, it's, it's on his weak foot, but, uh, weak, weak foot, it's on his weak foot, but still, bro, you, you gotta make a better attempt at that, I don't think Ronaldo was good today, now, he made his penalty in the shootout, which props to him, it takes a lot of balls to miss a penalty, and then go back, and score your penalty, and shoot it perfectly, by the way, that, that penalty that he took in the shootout was side netting, not, uh, unstoppable, no keepers getting to that. But still, bro, that for the most part, he wasn't good. Again, people might say I'm a Ronaldo hater. I don't think he was good today. But it's not just Ronaldo, man, because he's a 40-year-old target, man. This is not prime Ronaldo we're talking about. You do have two players in their prime who have yet to show up at this tournament, and I'm putting most of the blame on them, on, on them, not on Ronaldo. Bruno Fernandes and, and Bernardo Silva, what the fuck am I watching, dude? What am I watch, watching? And Roberto Martinez, the fact that you took out Vitinha, who was your best midfielder in this game, and you left those two on, shows why you're one of the worst managers in the history of international football. What are you watching? The second you took off Vitinha, all your threat going forward was gone, like I said. Bruno Silva was awful. Bruno Fernandez was awful. Like, like they, just, they just have not been good. Bruno Fernandez had one good game, one good half, really, this whole tournament. And for the most part, he's been non-existent. And you need those players to show up if you want your team to actually go through and make it far. Like, people had you going into this tournament before it started. I thought Portugal's best players say were their two fullbacks, Nuno Mendes and Joao Cancelo. Who, Joao Cancelo, bro, if we get that Joao Cancelo for Barca, where the fuck was that Joao Cancelo for, like, the final two months for Barca? Going forward, he was a menace, bro. There was like that stretch from like the start of the second half up until like the 60th minute. My God, bro, he looked like Prime Messi out there. He looked like Roberto Carlos or Cafu. He was taking on players, bro, splitting defense, splitting the defense. He looked so good in that second half. He actually looked really, really good in my opinion. I thought Pepe had a great game. Pepe looked like a 20-year-old man, giving it his all on the pitch. 
Obviously, he had that mistake that almost cost him that game in extra time. But still, for the most part, that Pepe was so, so good being so physical, bro. Uh, but yeah, again, like I said, I thought, I just think Portugal didn't really, like, their best players have to show up and their attack is just non-existent. Rafael Leao, when they took him off, I was a little bit skeptical because I thought he was doing some good things in that game. But the thing with Leao is... His work rate is just not there. And with a team like Slovenia, who have great work rate, you got to have players who are willing to track back. And Leao just seems too lazy to track back at times. And Slovenia, bro, the thing with Slovenia, man, they just don't have guys who can make those. They, they just, they, they have the heart like most of these teams have, but they just lack the quality, man. That's the frustrating thing. Because if Slovenia had the quality, they win this game. That that save by Diego Costa, who, by the way, in my opinion, was man of the match save because of what he did in the penalty shootout. And that save he made an extra time where Pepe slips, like I said. The players threw on goal one-on-one. -on -one. It was a terrible finish, by the way. I mean, he should be doing better there, again. I'm talking like sitting on my couch. I'm guessing in the moment, it's a lot harder than like than it looks. But still, man, that save is like a Debu type save in the World Cup against Colo Mone. That save saved Portugal. Uh, save saved Portugal. That save rescued Portugal in that game because obviously they scored that. I'm guessing Slovenia won that game. It was an extra time. But I thought Diego Costa was amazing. I thought Pepe had a good game, like I said. But yeah, man, Portugal for the most part have just been underwhelming at this tournament. Then we get to the shootout. And, you know, Ronaldo converts his penalty, uh, Bruno Fernandes converts his penalty, Bruno Silva converts his penalty, and, you know, Slovenia missed all three. That's crazy. You cannot do that in a penalty shootout. Diogo Costa, that's one of the best performances I've ever seen in a penalty shootout. He gets the right way every single time. But if you look at those penalties, they're all, like, it's just it's, it's, it's a 50-50 gamble because if the keeper goes the right way, he's saving it. They're, they're not placed in the corner. They're not high. It's all middle and a little bit to the side. So you're basically hoping, hopefully the keeper goes the wrong way and then he won't save it. But if the keeper goes the right way, you're fucked. And we saw Diogo Costa saved all three of them. He guessed the right way on all of them. Crazy, bro. Crazy. And he saved Portugal today. He saved Ronaldo. Because if he doesn't make those saves and Slovenia win this game, a lot of the fault is going on Ronaldo. Whether we like it, or, whether you guys like it or not, Ronaldo fans or not. Because the same way happens with Messi. You miss a penalty, an extra time to send your team to a, to a, to a, to a Euro quarterfinal. And you don't play well. You don't play well for the whole game. You're letting the Slovenian players get into your head. That bald guy. I don't know what his name is, but he was getting into Ronaldo's head a lot. Ronaldo was clearly frustrated throughout this whole game. Wanted to score a goal. Like he just couldn't get his goal. He wanted, like it looked like Portugal. Every time they had the ball, they were looking for Ronaldo. And look, I gotta say this, man. I gotta say this. Okay. Uh, I gotta say two things, by the way. Two things, actually. Number one, the pitch in this game has been was absolutely terrible. It was absolutely fucking horrendous. The fact that this is the Euro is supposed to be the biggest competition in European football. And you and like, yeah, it's supposed to be the biggest competition, club comp uh, international competition in Europe. And we're, they're playing on a pitch like that. It's terrible. That pitch, I mean, bro, there was patches everywhere. What the fuck was that pitch? It was so bad. It was so badly maintained. It just didn't look good. It looked like a, it just didn't look like a, like a serious uh, field in my opinion to, to play such a, a game of this high stakes on. So I just wanted to get that out of the way because it really bothered me, the state of that pitch. But also second thing, we all saw the pictures and the videos of Ronaldo crying in between the, between the extra time breaks, obviously, uh, in, in between the 15 minutes uh, after he missed the penalty. Here's what I got to say. Okay, this is what I gotta say. I have nothing against men crying. I, I, I can't believe I have to say that out loud, but I have nothing. Men should be allowed to cry. I think it's a, I think showing vulnerability as a man is something that's very frowned upon by society, but I think it's something that uh, it should be more normalized in my opinion. So I have no, no, no problem whatsoever with Ronaldo crying. But doing that in between, like, it, like while the game's still going on, while your team is still tied, is unacceptable in my opinion because the whole this guy's whole brand is built on mentality and the fact that he's the mentally strongest athlete that maybe the, the sport has ever seen and for you to be doing that i mean granted they went through but that's still not a good look in my opinion because i know if messi did that everybody would be clowning him and calling him soft and a guy who's not built for the moments but when ronaldo does it everybody calls it passion oh when ronaldo does something it's passion but when messi does it he's a pussy and he's weak that to me, I don't like seeing that, bro. Because again, your teammates are counting on you. You're the leader. You're the leader of, leader of the team. You're supposed to be this stoic, calm voice presence, like you have been throughout your career. Honestly, Ronaldo has. Like, this is the first time I've ever seen. I've ever. I've ever seen him do that. And maybe it's because he knows that the end is near, so he doesn't have many chances to win a a major trophy with Portugal again. So he thinks he screwed up the opportunity. But still, man, you should not be crying like that. In my opinion, at least. Again, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below about Ronaldo crying. But to me, if the game is over and you lose, like he, like he cried against Morocco, that's fine. I have no problem with that. But in the middle of a game, you cannot be crying like that. And again, granted, he went, he, he still went and converted his penalty in the shootout, which is obviously props to him, but still, just crying like that for a guy who's meant to be this guy who's a mentality monster, just not good enough. And also, in the game itself, bro, you're always complaining. If that's like you in 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, when you're prime Ronaldo, that's fine. But you're always complaining and throwing up your hands in the air every time you don't get the perfect ball. When you're really not doing much either, to me, it kind of rubs you the wrong way because it seems like he's always looking to deflect blame on somebody else. That's just my opinion, at least. Again, you guys come here to get my opinion. I'm giving you my opinion. That's just what I thought about Ronaldo crying and about his attitude on the pitch today. I just didn't think it was good. But again, big players step up in big moments, and he scored his penalty in the shootout. 
And that's what matters, man. That's what matters because he was the first guy to take the penalty. He set the tone for that team. He scored his penalty. And, you know, that's the, they, they're going through to the quarterfinal to play France. But, yeah, man, to me, Roberto Martinez, you're a joke of a manager. Portugal have to be better. That game between Portugal and France is going to be, it's going to be, I don't know, it's looking like a snooze fest, man. I'm not looking forward to it at all anymore because both teams have been so subpar throughout this whole tournament. Two teams that we thought were going to be two of the candidates to win this whole thing don't look even anywhere near Spain or Germany. Definitely not Spain, in my opinion. So, yeah, man. Uh, Bernardo Silva's got to step up. Bruno Fernandes has got to step up. I thought Nuno Mendes had a great game. I thought Joaquin Soto, like I said, had a great game. Pepe was good. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, man, it's just uh, Diego Costa, like I said, how, you got to give him his props because what he did today, that save in extra time and the, and the penalty shootout was, ma was amazing. But yeah, man, uh, this is just not... It was just it was just crazy, bro. It was a, it was a crazy game to watch. First 90 minutes were terrible. The rest of that game was musty TV. Uh, let me know your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section. What you thought about this game? What you thought about you know all the things that I talked about? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Again, I just want to make sure you guys understand. Uh, I don't have anything against men crying. Okay, that's fine. It's, it's uh, we're human. Okay, like but to do it in the middle of a game, come on, bro. You can wait till the game's over. You're not even losing, dude. It's tied. The game is tied. You still have a chance to go through. But again, that's just my thoughts. You guys can let me know what you think down below. I love every single one of you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.